Do you want to get ripped out of your mind? Do you want to spare all of your muscle? Do you want to make the metabolic adaptations to improve fat oxidation, increase ketosis, and improve insulin sensitivity? Look no further, this is it. So this is my rapid fat loss protocol. I'm gonna preface this video responsibly and say, this is not for everyone. This is for people that are perhaps around 10% body fat or less just looking to get ripped out of their fucking mind. So you might use this kind of protocol when you've got an event, a wedding, a bodybuilding competition, or you just want to see what you can achieve in a short period of time. This is how you're going to do it. So you may have guessed, and this is essentially a protein sparing modified fast, but I've modified the modified fast myself. So it's a specialized short term strategy designed to achieve rapid fat loss whilst preserving the maximal amount of muscle tissue. At least it should be the most effective way to do it whilst keeping you somewhat sane. So by increasing the protein intake and restricting the carbohydrate and fat intake, you allow body adipose tissue or fat to be used as a substrate for energy. Effectively, you get more and more and more lean. This methodology has been well documented in the literature for promoting fat loss and preserving lean muscle mass. As of right now, there is no current consensus on the optimal level of a daily protein intake in one's diet when it comes to feeling satiated, feeling full. However, there is some suggestion that around 1.8 to 2.9 grams of protein per kilo daily should be sufficient to keep your hunger signals at bay. Now, this is especially important when you're very lean, trying to get even leaner. You don't want to be starving hungry when you're doing this. It's inevitable, but you want to slow that down. So if you're wondering which one of those kind of people you are, the 1.8 or the 2.9 gram people, 1.8, perhaps the more sedentary person, plus doesn't exercise much, they're about 1.8. I can scale that all the way up to about 2.9 grams per kilo. It's a short term protocol to make fat loss easier. So I want to be very clear here. It's not the default diet that I recommend to people by any measure. So to reiterate, if you train frequently, i.e. three or more times per week in the gym, physically active, maybe you're a postman, 2.9 grams per kilo would be a good amount based on the limited research that we do have. Now, you may find you have to reduce that slightly to get very leaner, as protein is, by nature, gluconeogenic, which means it can raise insulin levels slightly. However, of course, it's not as much as carbohydrate. What we do know about protein is around 50%, give or take, of the amino acids are gluconeogenic. So the goal here isn't to eat all of the protein, but to eat enough to provoke or at least maybe reduce hunger signaling. Now, why is the protein so high? It's the least efficient macronutrient to be transmuted into body fat. And it's a lot less than carbohydrates and a lot less than fat. So the amount for carbohydrate and fat is commonly misinterpreted because all the fat that the body does take in is turned into adipose tissue then to be used as energy carbohydrate changes things a bit like i mentioned earlier it in increases insulin so therefore the carbohydrate insulin model comes into play so that's when you take in more carbohydrates they turn into glucose insulin is raised and therefore your storage hormones are increased which makes body fat loss much more difficult. There's also studies where people have chronically seemed to overeat protein, at least for maybe three months straight, up to around like 4.4 grams per kilo, and they've not actually had any hindrance to their body fat reduction. So it is effective, but the case by case basis, it's very individual for you and how much energy you actually need or have to acquire each day to perform given tasks. Protein also activates YY peptide hormone, which blunts the appetite of the human body. So if you think about it logically, you're, you're going to think, oh, I've been fed sufficiently. Reality is your body's starving and it's ripping body fat off you left, right and center. Therefore, you have a, a double whammy effect to your fat loss efforts. So you've spoken about protein. That should all make sense. Very clear. Next point is the fat. So it's an essential nutrient. To keep it simple, based on a bit of speculation, a bit of anecdote, some experience I've got, I'm going to say I wouldn't really take your fat down below perhaps 
half of what your protein gram amount is. But be cautious, if you are going to drop this lower, you're much more likely to suffer nutrient deficiencies and problems downstream. Now, in this instance, when it's a short two to three week fat loss protocol, that's a little bit more unlikely. So you can do it, but I'm just suggesting maybe don't. If you need more advice or expertise, guidance on this, consult with me, book a consultation at compositionconsultant.com. And that's how I'm going to be able to help you. I'm not going to be able to help you through a YouTube comment section. Like I've said in the last 10 videos, I can't help people without enough information. So we've spoken about fat, we've spoken about protein. What's next? Carbohydrate. Now, ideally you want that gram amount to be as close to zero as possible. If following a zero carb or a carnivore diet, that won't be a challenge for you. It will probably be pretty easy. You won't have to think much about it. Now, in the instance where you're perhaps lower carb or ketogenic, I'm going to suggest just keeping your carbohydrate amount below 30 gram if possible. So how are you going to do that? You're going to get it from maybe some sauerkraut, lettuce, cucumber, aubergine, mushrooms, maybe just some low carb carbohydrate vegetables that you can seem to tolerate if you can tolerate them. However, individual responses will differ. So choose carefully. In case you didn't know, the microbiome tends to take on and colonate bacteria based on what you fed it over the last perhaps three week period. So be careful and cautious of transitioning if you're going to go the zero carb carnivore route. The idea isn't to strip everything away straight away. It's usually best to sort of transition slowly to avoid oxalate dumping and perhaps unwanted unnecessary side effects. So what does this look like for the average 80 kilo, 176 pound man with perhaps 10 to 20% body fat? So here's how that might work out. So your protein gram be set at 144 to 232 grams. Your carbohydrate amount will be set to zero to 30 grams. And your fat amount will be set from 72 to 116 grams. Now these are rough ballpark figures based on the protocol that I'm recommending or at least suggesting. You might have to change this around. It's all based on you, your results, your goals. So be very careful there. Like I said earlier, I would strongly suggest consultation with myself. We can sit down, work out what you do and don't need and what would be the best kind of course of action for you. It's going to be extremely individual. I've met people on either side of the spectrum in terms of food gram amounts, and I've had drastically different results. So be very careful here. In addition to this, I probably wouldn't recommend going past the three week mark for most people. I think it's certainly possible, but for long term health, probably not ideal. Like I mentioned earlier, the reason being the nutrient deficiencies, dry skin, irritability, poor disposition, digestive issues, just feeling pretty sluggish overall. And I don't want people feeling that way. So that's what I'm caveating this video with. Be careful. Now, if you want to use this in more of a long-term kind of approach, you might just say to yourself, okay, I'm going to do this protocol, this food gram amount, two days per week. And that seems to be very efficient at getting people to their end weight loss or fat loss goal. That seems to be quite sustainable. And you can probably achieve that quite well. Now, if you're going to just do the two days per week versus the seven days per week, which I'm originally advising in this protocol, I'd say just make sure that you have those days where you're eating significantly less on days where you're maybe less physically active or you have a lower energy requirement. Perhaps you're quite busy, but you're not doing a lot, but you just sat at the desk. That's a good time to do those sort of rapid fat loss days. If you're looking to get shredded out of your mind, build the maximum amount of muscle on the carnivore diet or at least a low carb or ketogenic diet, this is the place to be. Let's keep your eyes peeled. I'll add some useful references below in the description. And like I said, if you're not sure if this applies to you, book a consultation. I'll be able to advise you through there. Thanks very much. Build muscle and lose fat on the carnivore diet.